All right, hello. Uh, this is not a return to video making by any stretch of the imagination. Um, just wanted to get that out there early on. Um, but I did want to make a quick video because I have uh, <laughs> completed to some to, 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 to some definition the uh, the work on the curving plane that I've talked about in previous videos on this channel. And being that that was something I <laughs> started on at the beginning of the year, it was like, let's just let's get some stuff done. Got it done in the first quarter, barely, but still. Um, that's how I want to celebrate. Um, so let me let me show you what we got. I should warn you, there are already problems that to me are immediately evident. They'll probably be evident to you. They're probably, I think they're more, more noticeable on camera. But here is the curving plane with fence. So you've got the blade in there, pro appropriately um, squished in there using uh, brass... Um, and a, a, a socket and then a, and then a screw. Um, you have some some plugs that are covering up uh, these dowels. Um, the dowels themselves are wood threaded now. Um, I do actually need to trim them down. Um, and then there is a, f a fence here as well um, that is is bored through and then has this. Now one thing, okay, it doesn't look terrible on camera. Uh, one thing that is a problem <laughs> um, is. Uh, Mostly is a problem with how I did it. There's a minor problem, I think, at least in my mind with, with the design. And that is that, um, well, so so the, the thing that I did is that these dowels are splayed out a little bit. So even if I loosen um, this fence, which there are, there are some screws that go all the way down through into like here, um, there's also wood threaded, uh, or threaded receivers for, the, for these brass screws. Um, if I loosen them, um, you know, these, these two pieces, split apart, but I can't really adjust it particularly easily down here because since these things splay out and the holes themselves are equally distant, uh, it just becomes more and more difficult to adjust. The design problem, at least in my mind, I know there are solutions for this in other planes, so just that's all, is that if I'm trying to adjust this, the whole idea of this fence is that as you're taking the wood and going like this, um, the fence sits below, so your material, you go like, okay, cool, I want... <laughs> I'm not doing this in a useful way. So you're like, cool, here's here's the board. Got boards. Uh. Okay, here's the board that I want to cut. I want to leave a mark, and I can use the fence to ride along the side of it. And then I can just go back and forth and eventually notch out where that curve line is, and then, yeah, okay, that, yeah, well, you have to put some, some actual force in there. Um, but then you're basically cutting out a little groove all the way around um, all four sides of the boards. So then when you actually go at it with a saw, whether that's a frame saw or a panel saw or anything else, um, the saw is likely to track with the groove you've already made. Um, so you're not, you, you don't have to worry as much about the, the wavy drift of sawing. So yeah, problem though is that this fence can get very much out of, it can, it can end up not in parallel with the actual saw plate which then would encourage the saw to drift to some extent. I don't know how much of, how much, to what extent this is actually a problem because unless, as long as it tries to push the saw further into the work, then the saw can't, just can't do that. So like, who cares? It just means you're gonna have a whole bunch of the fence that's not in contact with the piece. So I don't know. Um, to be honest, the, the, the dowel parallel thing is a challenge. Um, and I should have paid more careful attention before I got this kit. Um, the recommendation in using these wood threaded dowels is using um, a particular kit uh, by a company called Beale, I believe, um, that actually uses uh, a handheld router uh, in combination with a screw tap um, to tap the dowel threads. Tapping dowels is, uh, at least for me, was very difficult. Um, I did eventually get it to work, but I think not, I think I didn't manage to get it to work uh, at full 90 degrees. It's still fairly splintery. Um, I, you know, part of it could just be the the box um, that you screw the dowel into. So the idea is you've got a box and the blade. Uh, there's this, this little V groove, V groove blade that projects into uh, basically a, a threaded metal tube. Um, so then as you start to rotate the thing through, there's this little you know, V groove in there that's slowly carving out uh, the wood as you spin the dowel through. Um, I eventually took the thing apart, uh, sharpened it myself because I was just getting crazy splintering and dowel shattering and stuff in the darn box. Um, 
So I took it out, I sharpened it, I soaked the stuff in, uh, I soaked the dowel ends in mineral oil and was able to get enough of threading that like it works, but it doesn't look great. Um, and I think if I had a lathe or something, you know, some of the, some of the advice I've seen is you know, generally you want your dowels to be slightly undersized, um, which would definitely make, make a lot of sense. Um, you're going to have a lot less friction trying to get the thing through the darn cutter and yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm not sure there, there, there are a couple things I still, I still technically need to do. Um, also I do want to celebrate, like I haven't, I have managed to not make any of the scripts that I have before. Um, largely due to, you know, it's not, it's not fully patterned out. You can still see, I gotta eventually get pencil marks and stuff off of here. Um, I gotta throw some finish on it potentially. Um, I'm also in theory, you should put um, a small strip of wood at the bottom of this fence um, so that as you're going along, it's not the entire fence that's in contact with the workpiece. It's just that small strip. So then it's less friction as you're trying to push the thing forward. I don't know if I'm going to bother doing that because especially if this thing's going to be slightly askew anyway, like most of it's not going to be in contact with the wood anyway. And it's, you know, it's, it's smooth. It's fine. Um, but yeah, managed to avoid most of the mistakes I made in the past. Um, a lot of it was, um, yeah, being judicious about uh, using um, using appropriate drill bits when trying to get uh, to to start circles in shaping shaping this material, um, and then really really leaning on uh, uh, rasps and files. I, mostly rasps. I still need to actually do the filing um, rather than coming at it with chisels and being too aggressive and then risking things popping off and stuff. But anyway, I believe this is attempt number four, and it's the first one that is functionally complete as in I can theoretically take this now oh that's the other thing uh, I'm, I'm supposed to screw these I'm supposed to glue these dowels in I don't think there's any chance they barely thread as is it's squeaky as all heck I don't think they're going to get in there <laughs> if I put any glue <sighs> I mean the dowels can be replaced but there's also risk of me uh, um, stripping the stripping the toe you know what I could do um just and just just spitballing now, um, I could just say to heck with to heck with beauty and just drill some darn, <laughs> just drill straight into the top of the dowel, right? Because I don't care if the dowel spins. I care that the dowel is parallel, um, and then say to heck with any threading whatsoever. I could even widen, um, widen the holes so that um, so that the threading inside inside these sockets uh, is stripped away entirely, and then I can guarantee that it's something close to vertical. Be a lot easier with drill press as well. Um, Cause I'm, you know, I'm eyeballing 90 degrees and not quite getting there. Uh, you, you can see it's, it's, it's definitely splayed out here versus, versus up here. And to some extent I can adjust them, but the creakiness uh, makes me nervous in, <laughs> in trying to do that. So there may be some ways to not salvage this, but make it, make it better. Um, oh yeah, and what was I, I actually do need to trim down um, the, the length because I, I ended up threading more of the dowel than, than need be so you can still see some of the some of the threads in here um, that don't necessarily need to be visible but um, I would love to find I, yeah I would love for there to be some sort of way uh, for me to just do a single adjustment um, that doesn't I guess yeah I, I don't know the I don't know the way to, to make that work but just to, to force that these things are always in parallel and not let them pivot independently on, on two different dowels. Um, but I don't know it. At least off the top of my head, there's not an easy way to do that. And unless I, yeah. So either the fence is super important and it not being <laughs> perfectly parallel is going to be tricky. And given how difficult this thing is to adjust and knowing that I've got to both keep it from slipping at all while tightening two separate screws um, to get it perfect uh, while also trying to kind of manhandle it into being just right, it's going to be tricky. Um, or yeah, or yeah. So either it doesn't matter at all, uh, or it's very precise, and I it, this is not built with enough uh, care that it'll be able to uh, to be that precise. So we'll learn. Um, but yeah, um, I, I did want to I did want to just mention it because it's a thing we we're working on, and I did actually get it done. And whether or not it ends up actually being useful is anybody's guess. I have I have a board of cherry. It's my last 
board of cherry that's been sitting there um, that I need to use to replace the rails for the frame saw I was working on. Um, I was waiting on on actually having this complete, so because there's not enough uh, material, <laughs> there's not enough material for me to get away with the amount of waste that I usually uh, have when I try and cut to a straight line with just a panel saw and no guide. So I was thinking, all right, well we'll build this. We'll go ahead and actually lay down those tracks and then see if we can actually cut straight and hopefully reduce the amount of waste. We'll see if that ends up being the case or not. Um, but you know what? We did a thing. And if we never use it, that's not the end of the world. Um, in theory, I need to learn to, <laughs> I need to learn to saw straight anyway. Um, hey, I can't just be pulling this thing out ever, uh, all the time. Um, the other, the other thing that this is really useful for is resawing. So if you have, if you have the board vertically, okay. <clears throat> yeah, board like this, and I say, actually, I want a board thinner than this. Well, go ahead and do the same thing. Just make a curve uh, along the top. Obviously, the fence would need to be adjusted. Uh, but go ahead and run a curve along the top. Run all the way around all four corners of this board. And then go at it with the, with the frame saw to make thinner material. Um, all stuff that's easy to do with power tools and whatnot. But, uh, you know, noise and don't particularly want to. Um, yeah, that's kind of the update. I don't know if it's useful. Um, but yeah, made a thing. So that's cool. Um, I hope you're having a great uh, whatever month this is. March. Yeah. Have a good March. Have a good uh, April as well. Okay. Peace.